Hey, what's going on guys? Alex here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to set things up in Fusion 360 for 3D carving using the CNC. More specifically, how to carve this top for the side table that I built. And if you wanna see the full build video for that side table, I'm gonna drop a link in the descriptions. Um, yeah, so to get started, the first thing that we're gonna need is the 3D model. And if you already bought my plans for the side table, you know that the model is already part of that package. So you can simply import that into Fusion 360 following those steps that I laid out in those plans. Um, but if you don't have that file yet, don't worry about it. I'm gonna show you how to model that in Fusion 360 just so that everyone's on the same page and we can practice together. Um, feel free to skip this section if you already have that file, but let's get started. So let's launch Fusion 360 and first let's make sure that we are in the design workbench. And then under the solids tab, come down to create sketch. And we're gonna pick the XY plane, which gives us a top-down view. Click on that and then let's select the circle tool. We can place the center anywhere we want, it doesn't matter right now. And let's set this diameter to 520 millimeters, or about 20 and a half inches, which is the same size as my actual side table. Now I want this model to match as closely as possible to the one I have in my plans, so that later on the information is all gonna match up between everybody. Um, anyway, now that we have our circle defined, type E on the keyboard, and uh, let's zoom out a little bit, and let's rotate that. Um, I'm gonna extrude this up 26 millimeters, or roughly about an inch. And then I'm gonna pick this top surface and type O on the keyboard for the offset tool, and I'm gonna pick this outer edge, and I can either drag these arrows or just type in negative 15. So now we have a new circle, and let's type E on the keyboard again. And I'm gonna drag this one down into our body by 12 millimeters. So now we have our final geometry. I am gonna start working on the profile of the lip. So I'm gonna come up here to modify and then pick chamfer. And then I'm gonna to have to zoom in here and we're gonna pick this top inside edge. I'm gonna push this in until this vertical wall completely disappears or just set that to 12 millimeters. Now let's uh, type F on the keyboard for fillet tool. And I'm gonna pick these top two edges and I'm gonna set that to 3.5 millimeters or roughly about one eighth of an inch. And let's uh, zoom out here. We have one last sharp edge here. So let's select that, type F on the keyboard again and then let's set that to 22 millimeters. Okay, so now we have our final dish shape. Um, let's go to the top view. The last thing I'm gonna do is type M on the keyboard, and I'm gonna move this until the edges touch the zero axis on this plane. So something like that. So once again, I'm just doing this so that this model matches closely to what I have in the plans. That way everyone's gonna see roughly the same images and parameters as we proceed over to CAM, which is what we're gonna do now. Um, so to do that, come up here and switch from the design workspace to the manufacturer workspace. And this is where all the CAM magic happens. Now come down to setup and then new setup. So this is where we define the type of operation that we're generating a toolpath for, the model used to calculate that toolpath, and the size and shape of the raw material we're starting out with. So under the setup tab, the operation type is set to milling since we're using a CNC to cut this. And then under origin, I like to set this as stock box point, which allows me to, uh, let me rotate this real quick. Um, it allows me to pick any of these points around the stock bounding box. And this point tells the machine where it should consider to be zero. And I usually like to pick this point right here. It's on the bottom corner, the, the, the top surface of the bottom left corner. And later on when we're ready to carve this on the CNC, the machine will ask us again to define the zero location on the actual physical stock. And I'm gonna pick this same exact point, that way it matches this virtual point that we just defined. So yeah, just keep in mind that whatever you do here should also match what you do on the CNC. Um, okay, so now let's move on to the stock tab. So this is where we get to define the size of the stock that we're starting with. And I like to change the mode to fixed size box, which allows me to input my own dimensions in here. And this is perfect for a project where the stock would be made from gluing up a bunch of boards together to make a panel, which you know was the case for this project. And if I remember correctly, I believe the width of my panel was 560 millimeters. The depth was 600 millimeters, 
and the thickness was 26 millimeters. And let's click OK to finish up the setup. And okay, so before we can define the tool path, there's one more thing that we need to do, and that's to define the tool that we're gonna use. And there's two ways to do this. One is to manually input all those parameters into Fusion 360, and the other one is to download all the information from the manufacturer's website. So to do it manually, let's come down under Manage and select Tool Library. And then let's uh, select library and then click on this little plus sign to add a new tool. So for this first operation, I'm gonna use this Amana Spectra quarter inch down cut bit that I got from tools today, which is a flat end mill. So under the milling category, I will select flat end mill. So here you can input some general information about this bit. And then under the cutter tab, I will go through this list and then use a caliper to measure my tool and fill out all these necessary dimensions. Next, under cutting data tab, this is where I enter in the speed and feed rate, which are values that we can get from the manufacturer's website. And once all those values are inputted, we can click accept. Um, yeah, so the other method, which is much easier, is to just download all this information straight from the manufacturer's website. So for me, I went to Tools Today's website and downloaded this .tools file that has all of the characteristics of every single CNC bit made by Amana, and then just loaded that into Fusion 360, which is why you see here that I have such a huge list of bits. It's not because I own all of these bits. But yeah, once we have what we need in the Tools library, it's time to define the cutting operations. And the first one I usually go with is a 3D adaptive clearing, which you can read more about it if you hover over it. But in short, it's just a process that's used to remove the bulk of the material in the most efficient way possible and then get the workpiece prepped to have more detailed work done to it. Um, and as I said before, I'm gonna use this Amano quarter inch down cut bit for this operation. So here in the settings under tool selection, we're gonna pick the tool that we just defined earlier. So for me, that is gonna be this Amano 46202-K and then click select. So as you can see here, all of these fields are populated with my default settings. So my coolant is set to disabled, spindle speed, 20,000 RPMs, and then the cutting feed rate is 2,540 millimeters per minute, which is 100 inches per minute. And these settings have worked out really well for me, but just keep in mind that every tool is different, every CNC is different, so definitely check with your manufacturer's recommendations first. Um, yeah, next let's go to the geometry tab to define what we are going to be machining. So under machining boundary, I'm going to pick selection and then I'm going to select this outer boundary of the model. And this just tells the machine to stay within this boundary when it's carving. Otherwise, it's going to try to cut away all of that extra stock, which adds a lot of unnecessary time to our process. And if we're using clamps to hold everything down, it's going to cut right through those clamps, which we <laughs> definitely don't want. Um, next, stock contour is just another way to define boundaries for the tool, which we already did in the geometry section. So I'm just going to leave this the way it is. Um, make sure that rest machining is checked. So what this does is that it tells the machine to only remove the material that was left over from the previous operation. Um, and since this is our first operation, I'm going to change the source to from setup stock. Um, next, I usually keep the heights tab the way it is. And then under the passes tab, I'm going to change this maximum roughing step down to six millimeters, which is roughly equal to the diameter of my bit. And then make sure that stock to leave is checked. So this will leave a small amount of extra material for the finishing passes to chew through. Um, finally, let's click OK to let the tool path generate. Um, so after this operation, we'll end up with some staircase shapes and areas where the part curves in a Z axis. So now we need to define the finishing operation to smooth all that out so that we end up with the smooth contours that we modeled. And to do that, we're going to use a 3D parallel pass. And you can hover over this to read more about it, but we're going to jump right to the settings. Um, so for the tool that we're going to use for this operation, it's going to be the Amana 46294-K, which is a 1 8 inch radius ball nose bit. So if you look here, this bit has a rounded tip, and this is what allows it to cut those smooth contours and curves that a flattened mill bit cannot. So 
Um, let's go ahead and select this bit. And here are my settings. Feel free to take a screenshot of them, but they're just uh, the default manufacturer settings with the coolant disabled. So under Geometry tab, I'm going to set Machine Boundary to Selection, and we're going to pick this outer edge of the model just like before, and this is to contain the tool within this boundary. And most importantly, make sure that REST Machining is turned on. And this time, the source should be from previous operations. And make sure that the adjustment is set to use as computed because with Ignore Cusp, it's actually going to ignore those staircase shapes that we have in the model, so we don't want that. Um, once again, with REST Machining turned on, the toolpath will only focus on removing the material that was left over from the previous operation. So for our example, it will smooth out all those staircase shapes to create the contours around the outer edge of this part and remove the extra 0.5 millimeter material across the main surface to create a cleaner finish. So let's jump back into the settings and once again the heights tab will remain unchanged and then let's go under the passes tab. So here I'm going to change the step over to 0.5 millimeters and then we can leave the stock to leave disabled since this is the last operation to affect the main surfaces of this part. And then uh, let's just click OK to generate. Um, so usually for finishing passes like this, we want the step over to be anywhere between 9% and 5% of the diameter of the tool. So in this case, 0.5 millimeters is roughly about 8% of the diameter. And obviously the lower we go, the better the finish quality, but at the cost of increased machine time. So I find that usually 8% is a pretty good balance between the two. And you know, for a piece like this where the contours are large and smooth, and it's really not hard to sand with a random orbital sander, I think 8 or 9% is perfect. But if you have a piece with lots of tight spots and valleys and you know stuff like that, then going with a smaller step over is definitely more beneficial. Um, okay, so now that's done. The last thing that we need to do is cut this part out of the stock contour. So for that, I'm going to use a 2D contour tool path. And let's select the tool we're going to use for this. Um, I'm going to go back to this quarter inch down cut bit that we used in the beginning. So it's this 46202-K. Let's select that. And then under geometry, the contour selection, I am going to set it as this uh, bottom outer edge. And then uh, here we also have the option to allow the machine to leave tabs between the part and the stock material as it's being cut out. Um, if you use clamps to hold everything down, I suggest you turn this on. And once you do, you can come in here and adjust the size and number of tabs that you use. But for me, since I hold everything down using double-sided tape, I'm going to leave this unchecked. And also leave rest machining unchecked since this is the last operation and also it doesn't depend on the previous operations. So as usual, heights is unchanged. And then under passes, I'm going to enable multiple depth because if I don't, it's going to try to cut this out in one or two passes, which is just way too aggressive for my CNC to handle. So usually I set this maximum roughing step down to equal to the diameter of my bit, which in this case, it's six millimeters. And um, let's click OK and let that generate. OK, so we have our tool path, but in order for our CNC to understand these instructions, we need to load them into the machine control software. And every company has their own programs for this, so it's going to be a little bit different depending on which CNC you have. But um, for this example, I'm going to use Easel, which is the machine control software for Inventables XCarve, which was the machine I used for carving this tabletop. So come up here to Actions and then choose post process. So here in this drop down menu, go to choose from library. And this is where we're going to choose our post processor. So for me, I'm looking for Inventables. And here it is, Easel by Inventables. Um, I'm going to cancel since I already have mine loaded. But once you choose yours, just click select. Um, so that's where my post processor is. And then let's come down to output folder. So this is where we are going to save our G code. So just choose the folder you want to save it to and click open. Um, oh yeah, so if you're like me and you're using Fusion 360 for personal use, um, we can't post process operations that involve tool changes under one file. And plus my CNC can't do automatic tool changes anyway. So there's a couple extra steps that we need to take. So what we want to do is come up to the operations tab and then select only the first operation, which is our 3D adaptive clearing toolpath. And then let's go back to settings. And then the file name, I'm going to name this adaptive. 
and then we're going to click on post. So now if I go to my folder, I can see that there's an adaptive.nc file saved. So now we're going to repeat the same process for the other two operations. So let's go to post process, operations, and then choose only the second operation, which is our 3D parallel. And then let's go to settings and change the file name to parallel. Let's click on post. And then if we check our folder, the parallel.nc file is saved. Now, just repeat the same process for the third one. Uh, post process again, operations to the contour. And then I'm gonna name that contour. And post. Double check to see the file is there. Okay, now let's launch Easel. So in Easel, I'm gonna click on new project. And then I'm gonna come under project and then come down to import G code. And let's choose file and let's import this first .nc file that we saved. And there you go. So now we're gonna create a new work piece down here and then do that again. So we're gonna import G code. Now we're gonna do the parallel.nc file. And repeat that once again. <laughs> Project, import G code, choose file and select contour. And that's how you do it. Um, once you're ready, just click the carve button and you're good to go. Guys, we made it till the end. I don't even know how long this video is gonna be once I edit it, um, but if you're still here, I uh, thank you so much for being with me till the end. I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, I know I cover a lot of information here, but I think it's really gonna open up a lot of opportunities with your CNC and also for your woodworking. Um, you know, I, I don't do a lot of tutorials like this, um, but I hope you guys got a lot of value out of it. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments if you wanna see more videos like this and also what topics you might want me to cover. Um, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video. And you know, if you wanna check out the full build video for the side table, be sure to check out this video here. It's pretty cool, guys. Like it's, especially the legs. Check it out, guys. It's, it's so cool. Seriously, you're missing out if you don't check out that video. It's, 